Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Sunday, September 29th at midnight Mountain Time. As the snow piles up on the GFS models, winter storm warnings and watches are posted in seven states. Records are set to fall like dominoes across Canada. And Hurricane Lorenzo, well, it just may wipe out the Azores. Keep calm. It's boom time. Major Montana storm promises several feet of snow and possible life-threatening situations, officials warn. That's a situation to remember. Wind, heavy snow in Montana caused power outages and road closures as it's piling up as we speak. There we go. It's a tweak, 11 inches in many areas. Helena, Montana, strong winds and heavy snow caused power outages and temporary road closures in northwestern Montana as winter storm threatened to drop several feet of snow in some areas of the northern Rocky Mountains. Blah, blah, blah. Can you believe this? This is from Wish TV. Powerful September snowstorm dumps more than a foot of snow already in northwestern Montana. This snow is expected to pile up through Sunday. And it's really only Saturday. Oh, my God. What do they have to say? A historic snowstorm. At this hour, winter storm alerts are up for much of the northwest. Some areas could see up to four feet of snow. Carter Evans is in Shoto, Montana, where people are bracing for what could be a storm for the ages. Montana is no stranger to winter weather, but winter in September is rare. This is pretty unusual for us for this time of year. Micah Martin and his daughter are shoveling September snow in the town of Shoto, where there are already several inches on the ground. I should have started earlier. By the time we're done shoveling, it's ready to go again. Heavy snow fell across much of the state, downing trees and power lines. On the road, high winds blew snow sideways, causing whiteout conditions. The National Weather Service has issued winter storm watches and warnings for parts of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. By Monday, snow totals in the mountains will likely be measured in feet and in communities at lower elevations. When I got up this morning, I had this much snow in my car. Um, for my pickup. Did they give you an idea how much to expect? Well, the, the forecast set up to a foot. But Teton County Undersheriff Steve Jurdy is asking residents to stay okay. indoors as conditions worsen. So our biggest challenge for law enforcement would be any emergency situation, helping the ambulance, um, if there's a fire, or just getting places without the power being on. The snow is forecast to keep falling like this through Sunday. If that happens here in Shoto, they're expecting at least 18 inches, perhaps a lot more. In the city of Great Falls, they could get a foot of snow, and that could come close to breaking a record for the heaviest snowfall this early in the season. That record was set back in 1934. 1934 rhymes with Al Gore's a Bore, doesn't it? So strong winds and heavy snow falling currently in Montana. Our prayers go out to those people who are not prepared. A major historic winter storm in the northern Rockies late September hasn't been seen in decades. Nearly schmeckades. And in a global warming world, this is amazing. I don't know how the, the global warming alarmists are going to deal with this. A powerful storm system will produce several feet or more of wet, heavy snow, breaking power lines, cracking trees, gusty winds in the northern Rockies. Snow is also forecast along the Rocky Mountain front, portions of the Great Basin, and other northwestern mountains. Seven states currently under winter storm watch and warning. Click on your county to get the shmounty of your bounty. If you want to know what's going on, just go to weather.gov and click on your county. And then your watches and warnings. Officials are way better than the mainstream media. Trust me. Now we're at the newest model, which is up to 210 hours out. Hours of powers, and it's still updating. So we're giving you the most cutting-edge, breaking GFS uh, snowfall total models that exist. No one is going to bring it to you this live. It's coming to you. The data is pouring in now. So you're getting it earlier than anyone has ever shown ever before on the Internet. Well, maybe. I didn't do my homework that well. But if we just go out, uh, let's just say 36, 48 hours. Holy powers. Let's go two days from now to our October 1st 
we're looking at 24 to 32 inches in some areas of uh, Montana that already have seen 12 to 14 inches. So if you add that up, you're like over four feet. Snow extending all the way down past the central Sierras into the southern Sierras. Lots of snow kicking up in uh, Nevada, northern Utah, and little tippy touches in the high country here in Colorado. Northwestern Wyoming, you're not out of the woods. Utah, I mean Idaho, hell yeah. and uh, Spokane, yes, the hemp fields will get covered and plovered. I want to draw your attention up to Canada where the records are about to fall, and the worst hit area here by in the next 48 hours is going to be Saskatchewan. The farmers here are rushing to get the crops in. Brett Stumpf sent me footage over here in Alberta where he got his grain crop in. He's doing it now, and he'll get it done. Trust me. If you have 40, 60, 80, 150 acres, you can get it done in the next 48 hours, especially if you cut it already and it's laying. But if you didn't get any of that done in Saskatchewan, I think we're going to see some major losses here. And we'll report on them as they come in. Now let's talk about Hurricane Lorenzo. Kicking ass. Her Cat 5 hurricane right now in the middle of nowhere. Could possibly hit no one except the Azores, unfortunately. And we'll just run it through from your Tuesday, which will be the beginning of their lose day. As Hurricane Lorenzo loses strength from Cat 5. Probably down to Cat 3. Look at the heart shape there. Nothing but love coming up there to crush Flores Island in the Azores, which is one of the easternmost island in the archipelago in that central Atlantic region. Here you see Spain. It's insane, looking bigger than almost all of the northeast of the U.S. And that would be pretty close. But we'll just pause it in here. And you can see how close... Hurricane Lorenzo is going to be coming to these islands. Based on the mathematical models. So for those of you like Howard Lipton that don't know what I'm talking about, we're, these are models. They're mathematical models we're using to predict the future. Yes. So this is not actually not – we don't know what's actually happening late Wednesday or midday Wednesday, but we can make an educated guess here educated that this hurricane is going to hit these islands like pylons. There's Punto Delgada. And my biggest worry is for Largens here, which is the Flores Island. But the entire area is because the eye is going to come right over this, air, this region here. So heads up there. And that is Flores Island which would be Santa Cruz del Flores, which is the westernmost island in the Azores, the most threatened. But the largest wind field here is going to move over Angres de Herimoso, or whatever the hell that's called, the central islands in the Azores. So the entire western portion of the Azores will be impacted. Eastern Azores, it's just going to be windy and rainy. But... A storm of this magnitude could be record-setting in this region. Epic proportions. Yes. Records are set to fall like dominoes across Canada. Not because of Al Gore. Not because of Greta. Because of the grand solar minimum and natural climate variability. As well as the end of the interglacial. All mixing together with the magnetic reversal to make dolphins go crazy. Wednesday, September 25th, summer 2019, was perhaps the most memorable across Canada for being forgettable. Average heat, average rain, most of the summer's weather didn't stand out. But the latest forecast update shows record well, setting. Well, a whole whack of temperature records are possible across a wide portion of Canada and will start in parts of central and eastern Canada. The only temperature... whole whack of temperature records are possible across a wide portion of Canada and will start in parts of central and eastern Canada. The only temperature
That's not cooperating at all. And that's probably because we have them blocked here. So let's let that load up because that's pretty good info. That's information we need. We're going to reload this quickly. And let me just get to some of the other worldwide temperature data. Anomalous cold set to ravage South America by early October. The changing jet stream to blame. Yeah, that's the meridional flow, both sides. The collapsing polar vortex as we head into the grand solar minimum. A particularly dry and cold winter has negatively affected the South American crop production. Lima, for example, the capital of Peru, just suffered one of its coldest winters in 50 in years. According to the National Service of Meteorology and Hydrology, which Diamond is getting hydrologic right now. Oh, that was delicious. Just a tippy touch. Boom! <clears throat> and even now after South America's meteorological spring has sprung, the anomalous cold shows no signs of abating. Who's abating? Well, who's... <laughs> anyway, no doubt causing further headaches to the continent's hard-pressed farmers. Well, I hope they're growing potatoes because those are fine. And that's probably... This site can't be reached. Yeah, they don't want us to refresh this shit. It's amazing. The UK has set four new all-time daily record colds this month versus zero for heat, which is like a <coughs> boom to knowledge. I don't know how that worked out. Look at that castle. I mean, that's amazing. We're trying to get this Canadian weather forecast to come up here. There it is. Look at that. It's like, yes, let's do this. Let's see how fluxed Canada is. As the cosmic rays increase, as the muons heat the volcanoes in the subsurface. Well, a whole whack of temperature wow. records are possible across wow. a wide portion Look of Canada. That. And we'll start in parts of central and eastern Canada. The only temperature record you have to worry about is extreme heat into October next Tuesday and Wednesday the warmest temperatures we're following a bit of a stoplight procedure here if you see a red in your community a record is likely orange a record is possible and green no record likely there's some low-hanging fruit with some of those records it's London and Hamilton if we really surpass 30 degrees that's an all-time October temperature record now on the flip side of this coin is extreme minimum temperatures for the month of September by this weekend Saturday and Sunday temperatures fall into the negative double digits at times Calgary Lethbridge and even Cranbrook you have a high likelihood of breaking a monthly minimum record now a whole bunch of snow forecast extreme southwestern parts of Alberta these these records, these monthly records, likely okay, but we have to keep a close eye. Temperature record. Now, on the flip side of this coin, is extreme minimum temperatures for the month of September. By this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, temperatures fall into the negative double digits at times. Calgary, Lethbridge, and even Cranbrook, you have a high likelihood of breaking a monthly minimum record. Now, a whole bunch of snow forecast extreme southwestern parts of Alberta these, these records these monthly records likely okay but we have to keep a close eye on some daily snowfall records for the end of September and last but not least British Columbia Beaver we've had mines. what seems like days of soaking rain this month some of these values would fit in in November a lot of these values as well are creeping into the top 10 rainiest Septembers on record I guess he said it. We did it. It's going to be cold as plus.
Holy shit. That's good stuff. Uh, the reason I just played the flute is because I want to do a quick break in here. One of our subscribers mailed us all the way from Australia, from the Kukabora or the, the Grand whatever. But this is a boomer. This is a boomerang. This is an actual boomer. This is actually one you throw at people or animals, small animals. You can see here the amazing... Uh, carving on both sides to achieve that return motion. But this is one that has been meticulously painted. Yeah. Can you see that? Let me just... Uh, I got... I'm really amazed. Not only by the fact that how much they spent to get it here. It's pretty light. How big can I get? Holy shit. I could take over the whole screen. I, I had no idea. No wonder I paid so much fucking money for this program. Is that coming in at a good resolution? Let me know. Look at that boomer. Okay. So, back to business. Oh, there it is. More reasonable. Let's take it all that shit. I'm getting big. <clears throat> the UK has four new all-time daily records for this month versus zero for heat, by the way. According to the official weather records in Cap Allen over at Electroverse.net, compiled by NOAA, the UK is having a cold time of it in September 2019. Backing this up is the HAD set using reference period 1961 to 1990. Very cold era, by the way. Totally. I'm in my Schetzel mode, which is a little town north of Manchester. Yes. Anyway, it was actually reading negative after the first three weeks of the month, said the Queen Mother. You wouldn't have heard about it in the Kremlin-style BBC with all that institutional liberal BS. However, the words of veteran broadcaster John Humphreys God rest his soul. I don't even know if he's dead. But the UK set for four all-new, all-time daily lowest minimum record temperatures ever recorded ever. Versus zero for heat. Grapestone, Scotland set a new teeth-chattering all-time daily low of 2.2C, 36F on September 2nd, which smashed the previous record 4.4C. Shawberry. <laughs> Shove a strawberry up you. Central England comfortably surpassed the 2002 September 08 record of 3.9C with the chilly 2.8C right up there. I mean, can you feel it sticking it right up your popsicle stick or whatever? And Bournemouth, I'll say that three times fast. Southern England managed to tie its previous record low minimum temperature set back in September 8th. 2013, with a record of 3.3 C, smashing it with a temperature that I don't even know, but it was smashed, it was smashing. <whistles> okay, I'm feeling a little exposed here. Oh, there I am. Whoa. Another climate scientist with impeccable credentials. Lake Diamond. Breaks his ranks. <clears throat> now this guy, it, it, like if I could be ranked as a scientist, which is published, I spoke, anyway. I taught tens of thousands of people. If I could give myself a rating as a scientist on a scale of 1 to 10 of my accomplishments up to this point... I would rank myself about 2.5 out of 10 because I gave up. And I've explained why I did in previous videos, but that's unimportant. But as far as the scientists I'm about to talk about right now, I'm going to rank him about 8.73, which is fucking way up there. Way up there. 
Now, this climate scientist with impeccable credentials is he gets a 10.0 because he doesn't can hold back about anything. He's just like tells the shit what what happened. And I'm talking about Dr. Mototaka Nakamura. Dr. Mototaka Nakamura received his doctorate of science, his PhD from MIT. So you can kiss it if you don't. You, if there's no one more credentialed in the world that can come out like I'm like like small potatoes. I'm like a little prick that grows pot in the wilderness. This guy is the cream of the crop. Now, Dr. Mototaka Nakamura received his PhD from MIT. I mean, that could be a whole song. And for nearly 25 years, specialized in abnormal weather and climate change at the prestigious institution called the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. He was also at GIT, which is nothing to do with JIT, but could be the Georgia Institute of Technology, NASA, Jet Propulsion Labs, California Institute of Technology, and Jazz Tech of Duke. Yeah, all the people with all the billions of dollars paid by politicians and other schmucks and Soros and all those pricks. Now, this guy could be murdered, which is why I'm going to talk about him, because Mr. Mototaka Nakamura, doctor, PhD, don't let him anal probe you. <clears throat> In his book, The Global Warming Hypothesis is an Unproven Hypothesis, Dr. Nakamura explains the data foundation underpinning global warming science is untrustworthy. <laughs> well, and it can't be relied on. Well, we showed you last night how it was anecdotal at best. Global mean temperatures before 1980 are based on untrustworthy data, Nakamura writes. And Tony Heller is exposing this shit every day and his subscribers are swelling like 1,000 a day, 1,500 a day. He's almost at 50,000 subs. Keep going, Tony, man. Your work is so important. I hope you don't get a bullet in your head. <laughs> man. This is awesome. So many people putting themselves out there. Thank you, Mr. What is his name? Nakamura. We appreciate you. He's published 20 plus climate papers on fluid dynamics, all peer reviewed in journals. He's got an awesome beard. He doesn't fucking cut his hair or comb it. I don't. Watch this. This is what my morning, this is what I do. If you cut it right, this shit is amazing. Look at that. It's like, boom. Perfect. Mr. Nakamura, Mototaka. He knows what's going on. When you And, and then he goes on, and this is funny. I love this. I love it when you read something and you want to share it with the public and you're, you've experienced it. And a lot of you will have experienced this too, but he, this is like a mainstream guy at the top of the field is just experiencing what all of us alternative scientists and explorers, uh, truth seekers. Ooh, Illuminati much. Did I do that right? <clears throat> okay, let's talk about data falsification and Shungite. Yeah, it's going to kill me. Dank vapes much? We'll get to that. <clears throat> when arguing against global warming, the hardest thing Nakamura finds is convincing people of the data falsification. That's why Tony Heller is so important in this narrative. Namely, temperature fudging, which NASA, NOAA, the bomb, and uh, all worldwide so-called government agencies that are supporting science, science is doing. The, this, the government agencies that report on the scientific data are the frauds. Remember, this is government. You're elected officials. And we're about to interview <coughs> someone that wants to abolish the federal government. And a lot of you Trump tarts that want to suck Trump's dick 
which is fine. I'm sure there's Hillary tarts that want to suck her tit, but you're all simply sucking politics teat. But it doesn't matter what side you are, left, right, in between. It's government itself that is the problem. The FDA, the EPA, they're all bought and paid for by these multinational corporations, which are making you sick, which are feeding you soylent green and poison. And even the organic moniker now is covered in glyphosate and other shit and poison. It's disgusting. Not only that, these fields that are certified organic used to be certified poison. Very few food crops you can actually buy in a supermarket have any nutritional benefit. It's minuscule compared to if you were growing your own in a biodynamic environment or a biodynamic garden based on permaculture principles where you add rock dust and uh, essential micronutrients and have the mycorrhiza boom of your life where you can actually start reducing your age instead of increasing it. You can start uh, building brain cells by smoking the cannabis that you produce that are with these highly nutrient-dense soils, which are actually smarter than you are. Did you know that? But let's get back to Nakamura. When he's arguing against global warming, the hardest thing he finds is convincing people of the data falsification. If you do not pick your words carefully and forget some of the facts or get your tone wrong, then it's very easy to sound like a conspiracy crank. I just pulled my ear. That must mean something to someone. <clears throat> but it itched. I was like, ow! Boom! Oh! That means lizard man cult Illuminati. But realclimatescience.com Check it out. It's real. Dolphins strand themselves on West African beach, leaving scientists baffled. Hmm. I was like, what? What could this be? I, don't, I didn't even know. I was like thinking about it. And I was like, should I dab or what should I do? Should I dab or do? Should I shrink myself into this thin dude? Like over here? Or should I make myself a tiny man and simply get stuck in the middle? Okay, here we are. Now, the reason I introduced myself as Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, the news you need to know is because you're looking at the news you need to know. Pretty interesting, isn't it? It looks like we are all in a quagmire of conceptual complexities. Yes. The magnetic pole has been shifting since 1600. It's been shifting since time immemorial, since hundreds of millions, billions, and billions of years. Now, it just happens that every so often, At a cosmogenic constant, based on the Milankovitch cyclicity, at every major flexure point and half flexure point, we're talking 12,000 year cyclicity, 11.5, 12,000, 24,000, 48,000, so on and so forth. The magnetic poles of Earth start to erratically run towards the equator. Now, these are called magnetic excursions and you're living one. And if we can just come here, right here real quick. Let's not debug this. Right here, you're looking at it. Run! And this pole now is running past Greenland towards the Ukraine as we enter the next magnetic excursion slash pole shift. However you want to look at it, you're living it. 
And so these dolphins that beach themselves, as the pole rapidly moves here, let's enlarge this, across Greenland towards the Ukraine, the dolphins that once normally swam up into here following the pole are now following the new pole. And they're running up on the western shores of Africa looking for that new pole. Which, by the way, is rapidly moving over here. It's actually going to come down here and the poles are going to meet <clears throat> in the next two decades, somewhere here west of Indonesia, based on data. And that's where those dolphins are moving towards, the conjecture point. So this is the meeting point of the two poles west of Indonesia <clears throat> in 2035. <clears throat> based on all data that we've all looked at and anyone that you ask that's top in the field of the pole flip and the magnetic reversal, they're going to all give you this point right here. Even Ben Davidson will put it somewhere here from central Indonesia out into western Indonesia. And that's what you're living, kids. <coughs> you're living it! ...are killing people. And I don't even know where I, I lost audio, but I'm going to have to go way back because we've covered a lot. And I'm sure you're all pissed off. But I'll probably edit this out and try to make it as easy on me as possible. And let's see where we were and where I lost you. So, basically what we've covered since I went blank was a ton of shit. And hopefully I can figure that out. So, I was just doing a space weather update and we have a good aurora forecast, uh, but nothing significant. And I'll quickly go through here that there could be a Russian nuke test up here. And the largest quake here is 6.2 in Philippines, which came after a blot echo 4.9 in Papua New Guinea at 102 kilometers. This quake is up at 76, which could mean a larger quake here in the next 24 hours, even closer to the surface. Maybe a tsunami warning. Nothing significant on the volcanic front. And then we're back to dank vapes. Um... Dank Vapes and TKO and other brands are not real brands. They're fake. But these black market weed vape companies, Dank Vapes is actually verified on Instagram. But they don't even exist. It's simply a name brand crap canister like this that you can buy in bulk and fill with your own shit. So someone is going to hang for this. And now... I believe NBC Yeah, NBC News did the Now, the FDA hasn't done this. NBC News did this. They did their own independent testing. This is amazing. <clears throat> and really should say something about the government that's supposed to protect you. Uh, so NBC News went out and they bought their own illegal vape carts because they're everywhere and did their own independent testing on like a hundred of them. And they were all contained hydrogen cyanide. Now this is coming from a pesticide used on illegal grows to make illegal THC concentrate to be thinned with vitamin E acetate. And then if you burn it with this pesticide in it, it forms hydrogen cyanide. And 100% of the legal states with 100% pure plant extract in the vapes had none of this shit because it gets tested. But as soon as NBC tested the illegal vapes, they were all coming back. Uh, you're smoking cyanide. If you're that desperate 
to vape THC, I feel sorry for you. I lived in a state my whole life where it was illegal. I spent almost a decade in jail because I grew pot in a state that it was illegal in. But I never even thought of buying fake pot or any of that shit. Because I wanted cannabis, the real plant. Because that was the plant that changed my life. And took me away from the pharmaceutical industry and the problems I thought I had to the solutions I now know exist. And these are the same people that I were. And I might be the same person had I been born 20 years later. I, I probably would be. And my heart goes out to these people. But this has nothing to do with the mainstream cannabis market. All of those vape cartridges are 100% safe. Juul and all the other vaping industry, safe. It's the illegal cartridges being filled with illegal THC concentrate that is sprayed with pesticide. Which is creating the hydrogen cyanide killing people. And thousands, tens of, I'm going to say a hundred thousands of, of these cartridges filled with this poison are still out there. And almost all of them are going to be smoked. That's how desperate people are. This needs to be legal worldwide or more people will die. <clears throat> now, some happy news. Three studies that show cannabis grows brain cells. The International Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology. Here are the abstracts. Here's the info. Go get it. Get some real info. And also, smoking marijuana causes complete remission of Crohn's disease, which is one of the reasons why cannabis is legal worldwide uh, in many states, soon worldwide. But some of the biggest detractors from the cannabis world and making it legal, actually one of them lived in Colorado and he had Crohn's disease. Well, and he was totally against cannabis and one day he smoked pot and the rest is history. Hello. More disinformation. PETA. That's for the ethical treatment of animals, right? Some kind of group. They killed more than 1,800 cats and dogs in 2017 and only got 44 adopted. I mean, I could do a better job if I was like a retarded eighth grader with three cents. Give me a fucking break. You want to know more bullshit other than PETA that goes spray paint people's fur coats? Anyway, the world's oceans are losing power to stall climate change. This article came out. Um, and the alarmists like picked up on this, man. They went big. This came out 25th of September. United Nations report predicts more powerful storms, increased risk of flooding, dwindling fisheries, and you're all going to die. Six days later, it was retracted. Now, this is after 350 headlines ran worldwide on every major climate change rag around the planet. And as of today, not a single one of them told their viewership that it was total bullshit. Because read the retraction. We regret to inform you that the whole thing was total fucking bullshit. All lies. <laughs> Planet Nine may actually be a black hole right in your <whistles> and we could collide with it. Oh, wait a minute, that was wait a minute, that didn't happen. But it's but the end is gonna is near. The Sun Simulator. Have you seen that? 
You know how many humans the moon could support if you think the elites are going there? Yeah, less than 3,000. It's not many fucking people. You want to survive, dig a hole, go underground, and build a wallapini. I'm going to leave you the links for free. You can do it with a shovel or you can do it with a machine. I don't care how you do it. You better get doing it. And we're going to leave you with this as I edit the video. I feel sorry for Greta Thunberg because I was abused as a child as well. She is being handled by some of the most disgusting people on the planet, controlled by the biggest billionaires on earth, including George Soros. I hope she gets a good therapist. I hope she gets to watch the Oppenheimer Ranch Files. I feel sorry for her and for the people that are supporting her and egging her on. But I love this. Two million people also love it in the last 36 hours. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Comment below if you think I'm a prick. We love each and every one of you. Proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance. Thank you to our new Patreons. Please share these videos. The algorithm is changing. YouTube is shutting us down. Tony Heller is proof that you can grow a thousand subscribers a day and beat the algorithm. Help us beat it.